Go. Assalamu alaikum and welcome everybody to another episode of uh, Danish English Language TV, the global voice of the Center for the Muslim uh, Center for Muslim World Studies here in Islamabad, Pakistan. Uh, today, of course, we have uh, we are incredibly delighted to have a very dear friend, a mentor, someone that we very um, meaningfully and affectionately uh, and seriously call in in our part of the world a, a real ustad, someone who is a mentor, who's a guide, who has uh, guided one intellectually, morally, spiritually, and so on. And that is my dear friend, Dr. Ulrich Dukrau uh, from Germany. He is, um, I mean, the background uh, to his, his own biographical information is vast and extensive. The contributions he's made to both our th theological thinking on questions of empire, of, 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 uh, of capitalism, of neoliberalism, and, and towards an interreligious uh, solidarity uh, for justice and peace, all of these things that he's not only been uh, a deeply committed scholar and intellectual to, but also very much involved as what we can call a scholar activist involved in these issues. Um, what, a couple of the issues that uh, we will touch upon within this, uh, uh, within this uh, brief show is uh, are, are his involvement in particularly uh, some things that are right now very topical, particularly here uh, within the uh, Muslim world, even specifically here in Pakistan, and that is the question of, of Palestine. He's been involved in uh, an organization. He will be able to tell us more about it, Kairos Palestine. And he, of course, the other thing I wanted to really um, have him speak about is is, is his vast uh, corpus of work on the question of uh, the global uh, economic order and how that has uh, impoverished large parts of the world and how that is fundamentally antithetical to all of our religious traditions uh, that we come from. And um, if we have a little bit of time, um, maybe in light of that uh, second topic, maybe just going into, because this, his, his work, one of the works that I value, I mean, it's just one, uh, actually, in fact, I value all of the very generous books that he has given to me with uh, his um, very warmly engraved uh, messages inside them, but one of them, Transcending Greedy Money, which we have had translated here in Pakistan, and many of my students have actually read, uh, have just transformed the way that people have looked at uh, many of these issues historically uh, with the in what what we can call and maybe Professor Duckrau can uh, speak more about what we call the axial age and the and the and the great world uh, wisdom traditions and world religions that have emerged in that time and and what was going on till the present day and and finally I want to kind of really end with uh, what uh, the type of commitments and activism that he's been involved in as this intellectual giant uh, in, 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 in guiding us in how to kind of develop and build an interreligious solidarity uh, for justice and peace and against uh, the forces of oppression. So uh, with that, uh, Professor Dukrau, that may seem like a lot, but we, we can, I think, cover it maybe in 30 minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, what I want to begin with, uh, Professor Dukrau, maybe just as an introduction to our viewership, uh, actually, I mean, I will say in, both in Pakistan, but, but also throughout the world, maybe a little bit uh, about, uh, about your own kind of biographical intellectual trajectory in, in, in studying maybe systematic theology first and then getting involved in the issues of, of, of global justice. Well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. It's a great honor and privilege just beside our friendship for quite some time 
to be with you now <clears throat> and with another audience. Also, greetings to them. Um, just briefly, I started not even as a systematic theologian, but a church historian mm -hmm. with my work on the uh, church father, St. Augustine, who brought yes. together Hebrew and Greek traditions. And so that was my solid base. And yes. then I moved to interdisciplinary work in an interdisciplinary institute with peace research, research on Marxism, on global economy. And we were yes. the first center in Germany to develop peace research. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. So, and then as of the 80s, we were very instrumental in developing what is called conciliar process on justice, peace, integrity of creation. And within that work, internationally, ecumenically, we focused more and more on the imperial capitalism, the global, econo global economy in its imperial framework. And there we are now with all the de destruction that we can observe socially and ecologically. If you, uh, uh, if you allow, I would then um, uh, just, as you said, we should look a little bit at the present situation of the uh, global uh, geopolitical yes. situation. We yes. are that just at this moment to say goodbye to Mr. Trump. <laughs> and I wanted to just make a first statement on this because most people think that is a kind of extraordinary yes. um, uh, person coming from hell or wherever here. Right. And so, and so just, uh, just from outside coming in. It is not from right. outside coming in. It is coming from within our system, within mm -hmm. our long civilization. We will talk about that. You started already to talk about actual age. So we have yes. a long civilization. And what most people do not know is that capitalism in his historic development has yes. always in between have fasc what we now call fascist periods. Uh -huh. And uh, you know perhaps the peace researcher Johann Galtung, of who course. framed who framed the the, the slogan, um, "Fascism is Western civilization in extremis." Yes, extremis. Yes, in extremis. And so you could see, for instance, in the sixties and seventies, for the introduction of neoliberalism, the United States placed military dictatorships all over the world. In Latin America, of course, Chile was the most well-known. In Africa, the Congo, uh, uh, Indonesia, etc. Starting, by the way, 1953 with disposing Mossadegh in yes, Iran. Yes, in Iran. Persia yes. at that time. You see, that was the starting point after the World War II. So that is something. And Reagan, there was a book about Reagan at that time called Friendly Fascism. Mm -hmm. So an actor's face, but the structure is being fascist or starting yes. to be fascist. So it, I simply wanted to say Trump is not an accident but the naked face of the system yes that's an excellent point uh, uh dr Dukrau, and i completely agree with you on that because often uh, these days we and throughout in fact the trump administration we have heard the narrative that this is such an a, a anomaly uh, the emergence of trump and that this is uh, uh, so outrageous, and that it's a complete deviation from uh, a traditional benign American foreign policy, which for people like you and I know that it's flatly false. In fact, it's uh, much more of the same and continuity uh, in terms of what the permanent bureaucracy of the national security state of the United right. States has been engaged in for so right. long. But, but be, be, before we come back to the, and I did want you to kind of look into your crystal ball and, and, and see what's going on. Uh, it, it, what, what we can see will be the emerging trends within the next yes. okay. uh, maybe decade or so. But before we get to that, I wanted you to 
as briefly as you can. I know the the it's it's a tome. It's a it's a magnum opus for me. The transcending greedy money. Uh, the mm. work uh, for myself, for your dear friend uh, Dr. Ajaz Akram as well. Uh, we we use it in our classes and so on. And uh, uh, in, in <laughs> as briefly as you can, um, speaking about the kind of the origins, the the, the development of what you call with the re religions of the axial age, and what has led to this kind of. Uh, the, the the moment that we live in today, the industrial yes. late capitalist development. Yes. But but, yes. but 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 also the religious traditions, the context yes. that they emerged in as a response to the yes. corruption and the evils of, of empire and and the rulers of the day. Okay, okay. So what you mentioned already, we regard this actual age from the 8th century uh, before the Common Era. We regard that as the starting point of this civilization, which is money-driven. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we are talking about nearly 3,000 years from that time on, which developed slowly and the capitalist form came in the 11th century with the bank and trading cities in northern Italy. And yes. then you had the early capitalist period and then, of course, the real capitalist with industrial capitalism pushing the money accumulation element into production. Huh? Yes. which then was analyzed by Karl Marx, etc. And so um, now we have this financial uh, digital type yes. of capitalism. But the key thesis that we have is yes. that this is not another phase mm. in that civilization, but it is the final phase. It is the climax, at the same time, the final phase. Mm -hmm. Why? Because... The accumulation of capital is the key driving force in our economy. Now, this produces compulsory growth. And it's evident that the, the planet is at yes. the end of the limits with that yes. kind of system. So therefore, it is at the moment not only murdering and killing the yes. system, but it is suicidal. Yes. So therefore, earlier or later, it's quite clear this compulsory growth cannot go on. And so therefore, it is absolutely as a key situation that we understand that it is an, a long civilization and therefore it is also very difficult to change it. So therefore, mm. we ha are now in a situation that we have to change it politically, economically, ideologically, spiritually, because mm -hmm. the human being has been changed by yes. the money drive, because it has become greedy. Therefore, the title huh, of our book, yes. Transcending Greedy Money. So the greed, the accumulation is within the money system. And at That's the right. same time, it is reflected and interacting with then changing people from their human way to cooperate and mm -hmm. do together for common wealth uh, instead of then individually increasing property and money. So therefore, it is a very key situation in our human history. That is why also some of the political economists call this um, geo Geo era, mm. not Anthropocene, mm -hmm. but Capitalocene. Capitalocene. Because the humans have given away their being a subject of doing what they want, what they need, what the future would be in terms of our children and get grandchildren, we have given it away to the mechanism of capital accumulation. And so therefore, this changing of the ecosphere is not Absolutely. just a human thing, but yes. the humans have given up to that mechanistic driving force of a compulsory growth. Absolutely. Of consummation, of ca ca starting with capital, then cons consummation has to grow 
um, our grabbing the earth has to grow, etc. And so just uh, finally, as you asked for the religions, I mean, yes, the religions... I, I did want you to mention kind of what have been the role of the emergence of the great wisdom traditions and the great world yes. religions. And, yes. and particularly if, if you have any reflections on, on the emergence of Islam as well. Uh, yes, of course, context. of course. I mean, uh, the, the so we are talking about a development, first of all, from the 8th to the Roman, 8th century BCE to the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was the 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 uh, the climax of the first great period yes, yes. um uh, in terms of then property laws absolute property laws and uh, then slavery linked to it etc militarism linked to it and so on so that was the first thing and during that period first of all you had from greece to china greece judea um, India and also China. You had those Euro-Asiatic cultures uh -huh. responding together and mainly responding with the view we have to humanize this. We mm -hmm. have to work on justice. We have to um, to to not follow the hard militaristic male type of mm -hmm. thing but for instance lao tse said uh, the 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 women are like water they are mm. very soft but on the long run they will even um uh, they will even change a stone you see mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so from from china confucius um, and and lao tse and the buddha etc so, yeah. so that was the first period and yes. in a way um, Islam, as I understand it, but you correct me, I'm of course not a specialist here. Uh, I mean, I understand that the Prophet Muhammad yes. then on the basis of Judaism and Christianity, then for his situation in the yes. rich trader center of Mecca, got into conflict with this kind of money dealing system in the yes. form of the rich traders in Mecca, and then started a social movement with yes. justice, community building, etc. So I regard him as a, as an extremely important, um, uh, um, I mean, um, social reformer, social yes. humanizing force. Yes. And then I regard the liberation theologies today as yes. a recapturing of these original sources, including Muslim liberation theology, yes. theology, yes. your uh, organization just the yes, international right. network of uh, engaged buddhists etc etc so therefore we have a ground in our original holy scriptures uh -huh. in working together in this way of at this point of the climax of this money driven um, uh, civilization to help saving humanity help right. saving the future of our children absolutely and i'm 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 really glad that um you you mentioned um it, it, the, the the emphasis of of these great faith traditions and in fact, the, the origins of their response to forms of, of oppression, of, 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 of class oppression by rulers and so on. Whereas today, the conventional stereotype by much of a, a, a significant section of a liberal secular intelligentsia is that uh, the faith-based uh, uh, communities are just reactionary, retrograde, and always on the side of, of reactionary forces, the powerful, and so on, when in fact there is a rich heritage within, within our uh, uh, traditions, faith traditions, of resisting power yes. and challenging power. Yes, but, but you see, the problem is indeed that because religion is a very strong power in people, yes. Yes. So therefore, the powerful tend to co-opt yes. religion. Yes. So therefore, what I'm 
I'm, I like to say is that any positive uh, uh, mentioning of religions and working with religions has to start with a critique of religion because the co-opted religions are yes. part of the problem and not of the solution. So yes. therefore, as, as you know, our f uh, friend, the yes. Jewish liberation theologian, you remember Mark Ellis, yes, Mark Ellis we were yes. together recently, you yes. remember. And he always says huh, that um, uh, he even speaks about Constantinian Jews. That means Jewish people who have been co-opted by empire. And what mm -hmm. you see now in the state of Israel You're is right. like the uh, original Christianity of the first three centuries then gave up to the empire, were imperialized. And the same mm -hmm. happened now to Judaism. And of course, right. you have similar uh, phenomena in Islam, uh, Islamic right. world. Right, right, uh, right. Of course. I mean, just co-opted by power instead Absolutely. of being an instrument of liberation. So therefore, also in the case of Palestine, Israel, that is not a question of religion, huh? Jewish against Christians or Muslims against Jews or whatever. It right. is throughout the three Abrahamic, uh, Abrahamic uh, religions, yes. we have Constantinian forces like the present government in the first place and we have liberation forces in yes. all in Jew right. among Jews among uh, Christians among Muslims so, so therefore in, this religion in that sense uh, we uh, we both know has always been a a a, a, a source of contested terrain yes um, yes the religion of the powerful versus the uh, religion of the powerless and, exactly. and those that uh, are trying to resist uh, the powerful. Exactly. So absolutely, this is a recurring theme that I think uh, we can all agree on. Um, and, and, I, and I think that uh, you, now that you came to the question uh, specifically of, uh, of what's going on in, uh, in Palestine today uh, in, in relation to Zionism, uh, you of course have been heavily involved in yes. Cairo's Palestine, uh, and in some ways, we are incredibly concerned about uh, the developments right now. We've always been concerned with the developments, but yeah. increasingly, what we have now seen is the co-optation of various Muslim Zionist regimes throughout the Gulf, uh, yes. having them yes. normalize relations with Israel. Yes. The pressure is on our own government. Yes. Okay. So, so Go no, ahead. I, 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 I was just saying that uh, we, we had come to the question of Palestine and that it's become incredibly pertinent right now and very yeah. worrying uh, and concerning to people the way that various uh, Muslim regimes within the Gulf, who of course we kind of always knew were in, 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 in cahoots with, uh, with, with Israel in, in many of the regional mm -hmm. Uh, power plays of, of both Amer American Israeli hegemonic uh, designs within the region, but uh, now it's very much come out in the open with the yeah. normalization of time ties. Yes. Uh, and and here, if you read the media every single day, you are reading statements about uh, the pressure being put on now Pakistan, a country like Pakistan, which is. Uh, uh, undoubtedly, in terms of the population, fiercely uh, against this type of uh, yeah. normalization, diplomatic relations with a state that continues to brutalize and occupy uh, the Palestinians. Yeah. And so the, I, I did want you to um, both share your own um, uh, yeah. activist commitments within this Kairos Palestine, maybe explain yes. to us what it is, and yes. also offer your own assessment of the situation. Yes, let us start with that, uh, because we are also at this point at a critical moment in the political, uh, geopolitical situation. Yes. Um, as you can, uh, uh, I mean, if you evaluate Trump's presidency, then you can say the worst mm. effect is what he did in Palestine, Israel. Mm. Of all, many things can be taken back by by Biden, uh, yes. going back to the WHO, 
uh, going back to the Paris Climate Accord, um, uh, uh, even going back to the Iran deal in terms of the common um, uh, agreements in terms of yes. nuclear power, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All that can be uh, redressed, right? But what he did there has, at the moment, very stable. Um, stabilized the robbing mechanism, yes. which we know since 48. So therefore, Biden will not do a lot there, I'm afraid. He mm -hmm. may, he may, I mean, polish some of the things, uh, but not really basically change. Mm -hmm. And what 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 I perhaps I just finished that in terms of analysis before I come to our work with the yes. Kairos Palestine, and that is you see, um, um, probably you do not know because I didn't know until last week <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that Germany since mm. nineteen fifty two. Mm. was the one power to build up the military power of Israel. Did you know that? Mm. There is a wow. new book on that. There is a new right. book on that. You have to, by all means, get for your library. Yes. And since, that is since 1952, pro you said. Yes, I, 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 I tell you more about that. It is yes. Daniel Marvetsky. I yes. can send you by mail. So yes, uh, it just please. appeared Germany and Israel whitewashing and state building. And it's mind ah. boggling. So in secret, Germany, in terms of under the name of reparation, built up Israel's military power until 65, two years before the um, uh, before the, um, the 67 the war. Six, yes, the 67 war, and, where, where um, the Americans then just took over. <laughs> yes, the, the exactly, the Americans right. took over, and right. um, and then together with France, they yes. also built up the nuclear power of Israel. Mm. Mm. Right. So that is that is now black and black and white. Uh, you can yes. read it now in this very very excellent book from a British yes. researcher. Um, so so I sent you the bibliography anyway. Yes. So now with that you have up to this day, yes, you have the normally not in the open functioning military interaction between Germany, Israel and United States and Israel. Also mm. French French was involved in terms of the atom nu nuclear bomb, but um, but Germany and USA. So therefore, yes. what we can say is that Germany and the USA are financing occupation. Yeah. So therefore only if in Germany and the United yes. States, there is a change yes. in the population and there is a pressure on the government and a, uh, and a putting on the table of the conflict issue to say no cooperation any longer under these circumstances, but only if you agree to fulfill international law and yes. human rights. So therefore we have to see the situation in Palestine, Israel, in global context, and the particular powers are Germany and the United States. Who make yes. this possible? What happens in this tragic situation for the Palestinians? Yes. So in order to understand what we are now trying to do, and of course, that is also interreligious in terms of um, uh, mm. of um, uh, the um, uh, um, uh, situation in uh, in Palestine. When I was visiting there a year ago, we mm. were also we also had visits in various communities. So I went to a mosque. Yes, and the first thing the people said there. We are doing everything together. Yes. Yes. That was that was in 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 um, in Beit Jala, uh, uh -huh. near Bethlehem. Maybe you know yes. it. 
And yes, I this, do. Yes. Bethlehem, Beit Saur, and, and Beit Jala. Yes. So we are doing everything together. So in on fact, that In base, fact, uh, pr uh, uh, Professor Ulrike, you'll be happy to know that when, when uh, I think we were on that same trip a long time ago, 2007, uh, an interfaith solidarity group uh, from PFL, um, we, yes. we stayed in Beit Sahur, and I stayed, at, which is a predominantly Christian uh, community there right in, in and we said and they had the exact same response and that was in 2007 we are yes. all together we're yes. all together right and so therefore kairos palestine that group of christians and churches who developed that document in 2009 they are always in interchange, exchange and cooperation with the Muslim brothers and sisters. So there is no question of yes. religious antagonism in that situation. On right. the contrary, they are going hand in hand. As you know, many Israelis, yes? but unfortunately, a minority, eh? a minority. Yeah. The same is true for the United States. And also the same is true in Germany. We have only a minority of Jews, but they are also growing. It's a yes. growing minority. And so therefore we are hopeful that we have a kind of Abrahamic front <laughs> yes. against, against this type of fascism, which is, is yes. by now. And it is a constant war of this, uh, of this uh, uh, I mean, uh, powerful group in Israel. It's yes. a constant war against the people of the Palestinians. And so mm -hmm. therefore we are, feel very much ashamed, those people in Germany who know the reality, yes. that we are financing this. We are even militarily cooperating to, uh, to really, uh, I mean, you know, we, uh, we from, from tax money, Yes. My government gave a present, the uh, submarines, to place the, uh, the, um, the uh, uh, nuclear bombs nuclear. for right. Iran. You know, this is terrible. And the people do not know this reality. So therefore, right. what we are doing, you know, Kairos Palestine, together with Global Kairos for Justice, developed what is called Cry for Hope. Mm -hmm. Subtitle, Call for Decisive Action. And the motto is, you can't serve God and at the same time be silent about the oppression of the Palestinians. So wow. it is a kind of very, how should I say, it is a kind of spiritual struggle we are starting. Yes. And we are Absolutely. now mobilizing from below in the churches that they finally come along and you see in 2000 uh, in 20 uh, in 2022 there will be the global assembly of the world council of churches and yes. we are now globally preparing to challenge the germans and the united states and the united states we are very happy that the main line churches in the united mm. states are completely on the side of those Jews and uh, Palestinians who work for a common future and a common uh, common peace. So Absolutely. therefore, therefore, including, we including endorsing uh, something like the BDS, the boycott, divestment, sanctions. Yeah, of course. That is. Yes. I, I mean, I, I think I send you the the cry, cry for yes, hope. Yes, did yes, yes. You did. Yes. I think you have it. So, so uh, we have seven actions which we have outlined. And the main thing is, of course, that from the ground at all levels, we are organizing processes to put people in front of this decision. You have to decide between God and solidarity with the Palestinians. And you can't be silent about this notorious injustice, breaking of international law and human rights. So that yes. is the situation in terms of what we are involved in. And we have um, we have this Global Kairos for Justice, um, and we have a theology group, which is the kind of driving force in this. And we meet regularly on webinar and discuss our strategies and work at home yes. as much as we can. 
Yes, and Professor Duckrow, I mean, I, I just have to underscore what you have been saying here and describing your own involvement and the positions uh, that the, the, the church has been taking uh, through this Kairos Palestine document. These are music to the ears of the ordinary um, uh, Muslim communities and societies throughout the world that the distorted image in the, in the Western media of, okay, well, a U United Arab Emirates or a Bahrain or then mm. probably shortly in the future, Saudi Arabia will recognize. The idea is, oh, well, these Muslim governments are recognized. They, of course, as you know very well, are completely unrepresentative of ac their actual populations. Yes, uh, yes. Okay, I, okay. I was just saying that you you are obviously more than familiar that uh, with the with the idea that these governments that are even attempting to get yeah. into bed with the Zionist regime mm -hmm. are utterly a uh, unrepresentative. They are yes. police states. They are unrepresentative yes. of the populations which have, of course, great solidarity and sympathy uh, for the Palestinians. And mm -hmm. so this is, of course, this is a very tragic situation we are confronting right now. In, in, our, in, in, in many of these uh, Muslim governments being pressured or maybe not, I mean, sometimes, yes, yes. So many of these Muslim governments either being pressured or willingly entering yeah. into these arrangements with Israel. So I'm very glad that you touched upon this with a very strong and powerful and a prophetic voice that I think that many of us in the Muslim community are yearning to to hear that you know others from from without from other faith traditions are also equally uh, disgusted with what's going on, the brutality, the occupation, and the way many forces throughout the world, be it Christian Zionism and other forces, are willing to support uh, yes. these processes. So that's that's uh, great to hear that from you. And the final thing. Uh, Dr. Dr. I would love to have a conversation with you for hours and hours. Dr. Uh, the, the last thing, sorry, there's the, the pet rabbit that has come uh, in the way. <laughs> but the, so that the, is nice for the audience. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so the, the last thing, um, Professor Dr. Rao, uh, for uh, many of our viewers who may not have a sense of the um, history of of what liberation theology has has meant for people in Latin America and the Philippines, yeah. and of course now now throughout the world. I mean, within all of our faith traditions, um, a, a, a kind of basic uh, a, 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 I don't want to say like a definition, but just a, what is the impulse, the impetus behind what we now kind of uh, call liberation theology throughout yes. the world and emancipatory theology, and how we have kind of merge that with what we are doing together today in terms of an yes. interfaith, interreligious solidarity uh, yes. against uh, oppression and for justice and peace. So I, I'd like you to give your share your thoughts on that as our final okay. uh, word. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, of course, this is a <laughs> wonderful topic for a long conversation, as you yeah. know. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I was um, uh, very much in the beginning connected to these people from Latin America. Yes, um, yes. I was uh, I was even in the meeting when uh, Gustavo Gutierrez from Peru, for the first time, was presenting his outline. But the former, I mean, the first person to coin that uh, word is Ruben Alves mm -hmm. from Brazil, who wrote a doctoral dissertation towards uh, um, towards a liberation theology mm -hmm. uh, in in sixty eight. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, this kind of development had roots. I mean, one of the roots, which up to now is inspiring, this was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dietrich of course. Bonhoeffer as the one who uh, opposed the Nazi Germany uh, regime uh, um, in a very, very courageous thing. As a matter of fact, he got martyred, as you yes. know. Uh, yes. So his his theology was very very instrumental all over the global south, 
Yes. Uh, in Germany, of course, they just celebrated his birthday, but didn't do anything about his theology. Uh, but in the global mm. south, in South Africa, in Latin America, in uh, Korea, spe specifically in the fight against the military dictatorship, Bonhoeffer mm -hmm. was the inspiration. Wow. The other inspiration then were the starting base communities in Latin America. So mm. in a way, it was not just something thought at the desk, thought out at a desk. It was right. in the concrete struggles in Latin yes. America. And as a matter of fact, I also was participating in some of this and um, the uh, the kind of breakthrough, in a way, was the Second Vatican Council, because uh -huh. that was the first time that the petrified Catholic Church right. took, took people from Latin America and from all over the global south as advisors. So it was the first really global meeting. And at the same time, you had the World Council of Churches uh, getting in the uh, churches of the Global South. That was in 61. So it yes. was the 60s in which all these various, and I could tell you more elements, but these were decisive elements, came together. And so then from there on, there was a change away from the Western dominated World Council of Churches and Roman right. Catholic Church to the strong force of the theologies of the Global South. And then what happened was the next step in the struggle of South African apartheid. You know yes. all these people, yes. I know. Uh, and so they joined hands with the Christian, um, uh, so it, there it was called um, Black Theology or um, or um, uh, UDF, uh, United Democratic Front Theology, etc. And yes. so that was already an interreligious struggle, right. uh, particularly between Christians and, uh, and Muslims. I don't right. know so much about Buddhist participation, uh, but the Buddhist um, uh, is in Asia very strong in yes. terms of, as Buddha was a liberator at that time, as you know, yes. Also, the, 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 uh, the engaged Buddhism in Thailand, in Malaysia, and of course, um, and of course also yes. uh, in India, etc. Uh, you have, uh, and also in China, by the way, um, and also in K South Korea, we had wonderful meetings there with yes. Kim Yong-bok, our common friend, yes. and Buddhist leaders. I mean, uh, even even you, we were together in some of the meetings of Peace for Life. And so, uh, in that sense, this rediscovery of the powerful messages of the original uh, founding fi uh, figures and our holy scriptures, uh, yes. which capture this kind of spirit of liberation and social justice. This has, new, in, this, in the real struggles, Yes. of the second part of the of the of the 20th century has really inspired a lot of groups meetings communities um, and people and so i think as now we have the ecological uh, pioneer work yes at that time it was peace and justice was the main thing right. now i think we have very strong allies in terms of fridays for future the little school mm. children start so that yes. is a sign of hope that liberation theologies makes alliances with yes. the children's movements for life yes Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And I think that's a very positive note uh, to end on. I, we both know we, we are not uh, naive to assume that the, the multiple, as, as uh, our, one of our friends Bob Jensen calls them, multiple cascading crises that uh, humanity continues to confront, both within our interpersonal relationships and the social relationships, as well as now the question of, of basically the ecological ca catastrophe, climate catastrophe, 
as well as nuclear nuclear weapons and so on. So there's a whole lot of things, but what but what you've ended ended on is is certainly a a um, a, a a glimmer of hope that we have these communities, uh, faith-based and secular as well, that are coming together uh, and recognizing these and and seeing the resources within their own traditions that have always had that, for example, within the faith traditions, a prophetic uh, impulse exactly. to, 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 to challenge and resist power and mm -hmm. to try to uh, yeah. utter in a more just uh, and sustainable world. So, Professor Dukra, I would love to spend much more time with you. And I think my <laughs> right, the, so both the rabbit is is getting a bit restless. But the more <laughs> than that, more than that, I do not want to take more of your time. But I will try to cajole you to a, perhaps a uh, another session where we can discuss more of these uh, okay. issues mm -hmm. in detail because it is always. Uh, a treasure trove of knowledge that we get whenever we uh, engage with, with you, Professor Doug Rao. Vice versa. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor Doug Rao. And we look forward to having you again. Thank you.